yeah, seven yeah. o'clock. Mm. You, of course, should be my guest as well. Yeah, I will. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay, <laughs> certainly I will be. Mm. Yes. And, th and, and it's coming this Saturday? This Saturday night, that's right. At, yeah. at what time? I have a full band. Uh, 7 to 9 p.m. 7 to 9. Uh, yeah. yeah. Keith Cheers. Dick, Miriam Newman, Bob Hanley. And Leanne Koss will be there. So we got a five-piece band to, to Excellent. celebrate. Excellent. Excellent. It's very lively. It's come a long way from the more meditative and gentle mantras that I used to deliver. Uh -huh. And uh, it's it's an ecstatic chant. It has a life of its own. We never know what's going to happen with this music. Uh, because there's so much exchange of energy between you and the so-called audience. But there really is uh, no separation by the end of the, the program. Mm -hmm. uh, the the The... You know, the, you must know the term kundalini. The kundalini rises, the energy rises, mm -hmm. and there is such a like glory in the process. It's unbelievable to of me course. that uh, yeah, I I really enjoy the process. Oh, oh, that address, by the way, for this the moksha Kirtan, yoga. Yeah, for the moksha yoga is number seven. Which one is uh, apartment two, <laughs> Donald Street? That's right. That's right. Yeah, it's a little that, strip mall that uh, yeah. is just off. If you're driving number down, number seven, number seven dash two. Yeah, dash Donald, two Donald. Yeah. Yoga. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So thank you. Please be there. Thanks, Deb. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, awesome. uh, and and so um, obviously this this took you from a point of recovery to much more than that when you started doing the kirtan, right? And so so I True. mean obviously you look like a very vital and healthy mm. individual at this point and Thank you. yeah Appreciate quite that. radiant and mm. and so this has obviously not only made you well but better than that mm. Mm. thank you <laughs> <laughs> i had a son four years ago he just had his fourth birthday right and uh, it makes me feel less than young because i uh, <laughs> have lost a lot of sleep over it i have to say you must know, having yes. had children yourself, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And, uh, so I totally appreciate hearing that. Um, do you mind if I talk a little bit about the Caregiver's oh, please, Refuge? Please. Yes, well, this is what we're here to do, there to, to find out what your life has been about and, and um, you know, what, what your life has uh, given you in terms of the path you're on now, and, or the way you're on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it uh, came some full circle this year where uh, I had been engaged in teaching yoga and giving yoga workshops mm -hmm. uh, definitely had a strong interest after recovering in restorative yoga. So the power yoga thing turned into a lot more of the relaxation, healing, uh, you know, deep alignment rather than the cardiovascular workout that we're more familiar with in yoga, mm -hmm. the yoga scene these days. Right. I, I mean, in terms of uh, the yoga that you do practice and teach, is, is this... Uh, Hatha yoga related, or is it is it something else that's involved with it? Sure, well? you can call it Hatha yoga. It's as a it's also uh, tends to be a vinyasa flow, and then could you define vinyasa? Vinyasa, it's very simple. It just means that we're flowing with our breath, so that uh, all of the movement is coordinated to the breath. But then underneath the breath, of course, is your force of life. So you're you're fully aware rather than just you know the, it's like the diametric opposite of uh doing your aerobics in front of the tv so you don't notice that you're right doing work with your body and so you're paying deep attention you're paying deep attention you're trying to get as much awareness of the breath and the life force as possible and let all of the movement come out of that mm -hmm. so it's a very it's a totally different experience really satisfying it's not you know, it can be it can be difficult because it brings your awareness to things that maybe don't feel good about your body, right? So mm -hmm. that's that's kind of a gatekeeper that you have to okay, this is teaching me, this is giving me feedback. Now what kind of adjustments do I have to make to my life in order to start feeling better at whatever level, you know? Now when you're when you're doing that kind of a practice, let's say you're into a, a, a pose or a stretch and you're holding. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I would think that you would let people just say, well, whatever comes up, notice what's happening and allow mm -hmm. it to be just as it is. Sort of greet it and hello. Yeah, yes, be a, there I am. Be a and full presence is, to yeah. it. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. Not, not rejecting anything or just allowing it to be. Yeah. 
yeah exactly that we're we have this uh, in with the good and out with the bad philosophy yeah and uh we we could be like we could be out with that philosophy too that would be good <laughs> that would help us because so uh, basically you're, you're talking about accepting what you are at that at this point and just... yeah like actually getting closer to the bad getting as close to it as possible that's as a uh, buddhist technique and philosophy that I picked up along the way that mm -hmm. uh, like we want to get into the darkness right for example and I offer what, well of yeah. course you've been yes you've had to do that exactly that it's you, you know the, the more we push away that darkness the more it'll penetrate our life mm -hmm. it'll show up to everybody but us <laughs> because <laughs> you know anything you keep unconscious we're we're not aware of and yet it will rule us and it will it will drive our life in all kinds of uh unexpected ways so uh, for example I do a workshop called uh, Winsong Shadow Works that's coming up in February as well and what date is that uh, February 27th that's right. through the Louis Rail School Division there's uh -huh. three there's a series of three events the Winsong workshops is, is uh, this is in a school it's the school division continuing ed department that uh, they got interested in the Kirtan and then they saw this workshop so they thought that would be a good is there anywhere people can get information about that at my website, you can go to uh, yogacourses.ca, has all the Winsong yeah. workshop schedule there. There's there now oh, four you, websites. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Would that, would, would that also be possible through the BethMartins.com? BethMartins.com is a hub for everything. So if you don't remember anything but BethMartins.com, yeah. then yeah, that's... B-E-T-H-M-A-R-T-E-N-S.com. You, you got it, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, so uh, back to the caregiver's... <clears throat> We were sitting there uh, actually with a, a really smart guy. His name is Tad Hargrave. I'll just give him a little plug. If he were bringing him back to Winnipeg, right. he does marketing for hippies. So when I <laughs> found out, yeah, when I found are, out about his work, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, Great. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was very popular. Everybody, it was hugely popular. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's coming back in uh, the end of April, I believe. Yeah. And uh, so we hosted him. I learned a lot from him. One of one of the things he really strongly advises is to focus your work right so i all i was doing was getting broader and broader and we have this idea that we can be something to everybody so i had the power yoga and i had the restorative yoga and i had the you know the the workshops for people mm -hmm. who want to go deep in the personality side and then we got the kirtan for all the you know more people who can get into spirituality from enter an entertainment perspective mm -hmm. and and uh, so we sat down and brainstormed, like, what kind of a focused uh, audience would I be able to start to communicating with in a much less chaotic way? Right. And uh, so some people automatically go, well, you should do your programs for cancer patients. And I intuitively know that's not true for me. Yes, I've been there. Yes, I, you know, I actually did uh, offer music in the cancer care hospitals for a while. That was part of the, the job that I was hired to do. Mm. Um, I'm not against working with people with cancer, but I know it's not my calling, right? Mm -hmm. And so we were starting to, well, what's what's related? So you've been through this experience. What about all the people in my life that were called to look after me? I had a best friend at the time who took me in and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, did a lot of care for me. Uh, my mm -hmm. parents also ended up taking me in. They were my caregivers mm -hmm. for a while. Um, many people, I you know, hate to say it, but once you're in that emergency situation you really call in a lot of a lot of people's uh, kindness and generosity in their, right. in their service and uh, so I was very interested in watching how each and every individual person would go through this what they were faced with the um, like the physical hardship when you're when your energy is split now it's not you're not just looking after yourself you right. are responsible for the well-being of another person that's very Intense, right? Well, if you is, haven't been there, it can be a very deep spiritual practice to be doing that as well. If you're super smart, then yeah, that's that's what you're going to use it for. And, right. And if you're not, uh, I mean, in, even I have to say, your intelligence around the spiritual aspect of caregiving is good, but there's going to be some there there, there are gatekeepers on the amount of energy you can put out. Like, for example, when the, the plane is going to crash and the mask comes down, first thing they're, they're going to tell you is put your own mask on first. Even though your child is sitting there beside you, put your mask on first. Right? So this is a kind of message I have to caregivers, that uh, we have to 
care for ourselves at a really basic level in order to be of any service right. to somebody. Yeah, we have to be functional ourselves in order to help someone else. That's right. And we also have the, the unfortunate definition in our society of saying that a caregiver is, we think of, we think of a caregiver as one person. So, for example, married couple, you say your vows when you get married, to death do you part, through sickness, right, through health. Right. Uh, and, you know, these days, one in three people will end up with a diagnosis of cancer in their life. So the, the chance that one in three and one in two, one in three women, one in two men, which is a ridiculous That's statistic. It's awful. 50%? That's like half. I know. It's crazy. That and must be related to the kind of life people lead. Yeah, I mean, that, it's a, endless. A, a century ago, there was nothing like this, I don't think. Not on the landscape of that much cancer. Yo, no kidding. Exactly, exactly. Or, and that much heart disease, too. I think a lot of, from what I've understood, many of the diseases that are so prevalent now are very much stress-related to the kind of yeah. life that is being lived just in the human environment. Yeah, we're a sick society, right? We're <laughs> we just... We're, we're awful. I mean, and we're so sick, our healthcare system can't even handle it anymore, right? So the, the extent to which healthcare is uh, declining, is imploding, and then further relying on caregivers, right? right? The whole message around hospitals these days is go home, go home, go home. Well, when they get home, There's who's going to look after them, yeah, right? Exactly. There's all, yeah. There's all kinds of defaults, right? The children of the parents are going to be responsible right right the spouses of of the partners i see uh it could be your own child right your own child is not well or uh even myself i'm a single mother mm -hmm. all this research into caregivers just made me realize i am one like here i am <laughs> no wonder i'm so fascinated by the by the subject because there's when you are solely responsible for somebody and i'm not i i've gone out of my way to engage family and community and mm -hmm. uh, of course his, my son's father is very much involved in his life uh, I am not alone by any means well, luckily that, that's a good thing that's, a, that's amazing but uh, the extent to which I still suffer this caregiver's syndrome is huge and giving me an inkling to what people are going through out there as well, well is there a path beyond that suffering you know that that feeling of being you know just used or feeling resentful that one can't do anything else because it's consuming so much of one's time yeah. and attention to be looking after someone. I mean, I assume that part of your work and your therapy or, or the yoga that you use, the caregiver yoga mm -hmm. that you've developed has a lot to do with overcoming that kind of negativity about where one is in that situation and exactly. giving someone an access to something more energized and, and life-giving, life-sustaining. Exactly. Creating opportunities for caregivers that they can come and, uh, and get the deepest possible healing for their time. <laughs> time is a major um, element of the essence when it comes to the caregiving process because you may only have 10 minutes for, for, for your self-care. Right. So guess what? You want to make it good. You want to make mm. it concentrated. You want to make it... Uh, something that you, you can get a lot out of in the little time. So are these exercises that you give people? Or, or is it, you know, is it some place yeah. that people come, you know, to recharge and then so they'll be able to sort of continue to carry on in, with that work that they're doing that way? It's taking the shape of three forms right now. Okay. And I'll tell you my website again for this one, okay? Caregiversrefuge.ca Caregivers all in one word. Yeah. Refuge, one word. So caregiversrefuge.ca. That's right. That's where all these uh, these uh, programs are listed. So there's three things. One, recognizing that because caregivers can't get out that much, that mm -hmm. uh, I'm creating a series of webinars that can be broadcast uh, from, you can literally sit in your own living room. Right. And I'm going to be the host, just okay. as you are, yes, of, yes. Uh, in, in, the, in the short term now, there's four dates, January 17, January 31, um, February 14th, and February 28th. And I'm hosting four different experts in the field of caregiving. Experts not on how to care for your loved one, but on how to care for, for yourself. yourself. Yeah. How to organize your lifestyle, how to eat a diet that is actually going to serve you and give you energy in the process 
Um, uh, I've got an author, Sarah Lovett, whose expertise is in transforming her grief, her grief and loss into an artistic process. So that I'm like very 